So this is carbon monoxide and oxygen becoming carbon dioxide, which is consumed faster. Okay, well, if it's gonna be consumed, it has to be a reactant. So I only have two choices, these two, which is consumed faster. This is consumed faster because there's a two compared to a one. So I can write down then the carbon monoxide is consumed twice as fast as the oxygen. Compare the rate of change of CO2 to that of O2. This one will be going down and that one is going to be going up. Why don't I just compare to the rate of the reactions? This one is coming into existence, so it would be a positive and it would be CO2 is coming into existence. It has a coefficient of two, so that's gonna end up in the denominator. That would be one way of saying what the reaction rate was. And the other one that they want me to compare it to is the O2. And I know that is a reactant, so we'll have to use a negative sign. And then it's a delta, the concentration of O2. There's a coefficient, a virtual one there, so I'm not gonna do anything to the denominator other than put the delta T down there. So I can write it this way. And then I can say, I'm supposed to be comparing the rate of change of O2, so I don't want this two. I'll just rearrange it so that the two ends up over here, delta O2. So this comes into existence twice as fast as this is disappearing. We're gonna switch to something completely weird. I mean, these are all just made up things. But if you had such a a thing, you could write down what it means as far as what's the rate at which the reaction would happen. And you would just simply say, okay, the eight and the five and the eight and the six, those are all coefficients. The A and the B are reactants, the C and the D are products. So I could just start writing down, it's a reactant, it's disappearing. The A is the what is being changed this time. The coefficient was an eight and here's delta T. And that would give you the same numbers if you did the B disappearing and use its coefficient, which would be the same number as, oh, this one's a product, so no negative sign, it'll be positive. Eight's the coefficient, and that would be the same as D appearing coefficient of six. These would all be the same reaction rate. And such a thing, if you could measure only one of them, that's okay because you know what will happen to all of the others. If the concentration of C is increasing at a rate of four molarity per second, what are the other rates? I can just start by saying, this is the one they told me. That's got the same coefficient. The only difference between these is that's a product, that's a reactant. So this is coming into existence. This must be being consumed. So the one for delta A over delta T should simply be negative 4.0 molarity per second. Now you see, I didn't actually use anything but logic to get there instead of using the numbers. So the others I will have to use the numbers for. The change in the concentration of B compared to T. We need to get this in terms of C. I can just block both of these out and say, this needs to have a negative sign. And instead of the five being here, it should be up here. And then I'll write down what this one was. This is what I was given. So I can just say minus five eighths times 4.0, minus 2.5 molarity per second. We still have D to work with. Delta concentration of D over T. Now we'll look at these two. Okay, I don't have the six. Six, I'll write the rest of this. There's the eight. So. 6 eighths of 4.0, that's going to be 3.0 molarity per second. And as long as we're talking about rates, well, what is the reaction rate? It's just this. But we were told what delta concentration of C over delta T was, not with the 8. So 1 eighth times 4.0, which will mean it is 0 0.50 molarity per second. Now, the one thing I want to say about this is at the time the data was taken. We know that uh, they're going to change over time because eventually, if nothing else, 
something's going to run out and the rate will go to zero. So if we look at average and instantaneous reaction rates, average rate is what we've been talking about and it applies to a time interval. And if you picked a different time interval, you would get a different number because as you get closer to the reaction being completed, it will slow down. And you can see that this one of the reactants is decreasing very rapidly to begin with and it decreases less rapidly as the reaction starts to near completion. But when you're doing average ones, you're talking about periods of time that are long enough that you can actually work with the numbers and not worry about instantaneous rates, which would start getting into calculus. But you're still going to see the same thing, that it will be a rate at a particular time, and the rate will decrease, become closer to zero as you get near completion. Here's another example. They change the rate of a reaction. When you have a lot of them, it's very easy for them to find each other and react. So at first, the reactants, there are a lot of them. The rate at which they decrease is very steep. They're decreasing very rapidly. Further along, less rapid. And as you get close to completion, that's not happening very often anymore. And it all comes from kinetic molecular theory. So you have to go back and think about Chem 2 again. Kinetic molecular theory he says, if there's more stuff, there's going to be more collisions. So the more reactants there are, the more collisions there are, and then the faster the reaction will go. If you've done it for products, at first there's none. At first it's going up very rapidly because the reaction is happening very rapidly. But then it slows down as it gets closer to completion. So you get a, a curve going the other way where it's going up fast and then moderates and pretty soon it's just trickling along.